In this example, we'll see how Le Chatelier's principle helps us predict what will happen when a stress is imposed on a system at equilibrium. You will also be shown how to construct a graph showing how the concentrations of chemical species will change after the stress is imposed. Given this equilibrium equation, a closed vessel contains an equilibrium mixture of the three gases, NO, NO2, and N2O. At time t, more NO2 is injected into the container. We're asked what initially happens to the concentration of NO2, and we're asked which way the equilibrium will shift. In the third part of the question, we'll be given a graph and asked to complete it, showing the relative changes in the concentrations of the three gases over time. We'll start by answering question A, what will initially happen to the concentration of NO2? The answer is the concentration of NO2 will initially increase. This is because we add more NO2 to the vessel without changing its volume, so we have a greater amount in the same volume, thus a higher concentration. We'll make a note of that down here, that the concentration of NO2 initially increases. Question B asked us which way the equilibrium will shift as a result of the increase in the NO2 concentration. The stress imposed on this equilibrium is the increase in the concentration of NO2. According to Le Chatelier's principle, when a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, processes will occur to counteract the imposed stress. A shift to the left will counteract the stress by consuming some of the extra NO2 that was added. So we've answered question B by saying that the equilibrium will shift to the left. Here's the third question C. Assuming the graph shows the concentrations of the three gases in the original equilibrium mixture, continue the graph showing qualitatively what will happen to these concentrations after NO2 is added at time t. We start by showing a rapid increase in the concentration of NO2 at time t by adding a vertical line on the graph for NO2. Nothing was done initially to the concentrations of the other two gases. The stress of increasing the concentration of NO2 causes the equilibrium to start shifting to the left in order to use up some of the added NO2 and counteract the stress. Because N2O is a product, a shift to the left will cause its concentration to decrease. The NO2 is also a product, so its concentration will also decrease. Because NO is a reactant, its concentration will increase as the equilibrium shifts to the left. Now stoichiometry predicts that the relative concentration changes of the gases during the shift is governed by the ratios of coefficients in the balanced equation. You can see the coefficients on NO2 and N2O are both 1. So for every mole of NO2 consumed in the shift to the left, one mole of N2O will also be consumed. Therefore the concentration of N2O will decrease at the same rate as the concentration of NO2. Looking at the NO, its coefficient is 3. This means that for every mole of NO2 consumed in the shift to the left, three moles of NO will be produced. Therefore, the concentration of NO will go up three times as fast as the concentration of NO2 goes down. Let's look at the graph and see what happens after we have added the NO2 at time t and the equilibrium shifts to the left. You can see at this point that the concentrations of the products N2O and NO2 are decreasing while that of the reactant NO is increasing. This is what we had predicted. Watch as time continues. At this time, the curves have started to level off again. A new equilibrium has been established. So the shift to the left has now been completed, and the reaction has reached a new equilibrium. So we show that above the equation at the top of the video. Looking at the graph, we can see that during the shift, the N2O and the NO2 have gone down by the same amount. 
This is because they both have a coefficient of 1 in the balanced equation. We can also see that the concentration of NO has gone up three times as much as the concentrations of N2O and NO2 have gone down. This is due to the 3 to 1 coefficient ratio of NO to NO2 in the balanced equation. So what do you think will happen to the concentrations of these three gases as time proceeds past this point? Let's see. Since the system has established a new equilibrium, the concentrations of the three gases remain constant as time proceeds. Now we can summarize what is taking place during each section of the graph. The section to the left of time t represents the original equilibrium, where concentrations are constant and the lines are flat. At time t, NO2 is added to the original equilibrium mixture, so its concentration rapidly increases. At time t, the system is not at equilibrium. The original equilibrium has been disturbed by the addition of the extra NO2. The section between the two dotted lines is where the shift to the left is occurring. Study both the graph and the equation. The concentrations of NO2 and N2O, as you can see, are going down, while the concentration of NO is going up. This is what a shift to the left means. In the section past the second dotted line, a new equilibrium has been established. Concentrations are again constant, and the lines on the graph are flat. You can see that in the new equilibrium, the concentration of N2O is lower than it was in the original equilibrium. N2O was never added to the mixture, and its concentration decreased during the shift to the left. The concentration of NO2 is slightly higher than it was in the original equilibrium. Its concentration was increased at time t, then as the equilibrium shifted to the left, its concentration went partially down again as the stress was counteracted. The final result is a small net increase in its concentration. During the shift, the concentration of NO went up three times as much as the concentrations of the two products went down. Its concentration in the final equilibrium is considerably higher than it was in the original equilibrium. Having a good understanding of Le Chatelier's principle and all of the things that are going on before, during, and after a shift will help you in drawing your own graphs for future questions. This understanding will also help you with many of the topics you'll work with as you proceed through Chemistry 12.